In Psalms uh, 51, verse 16 and 17 says, For you will not delight in sacrifices, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. And I know that, that, that when you think about this, because we think of like how people will break maybe a horse's spirit or, 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 or in the military, they break, can break a man down, you know, so that he's, he's, he's more pliable to follow leadership and direction and all those things. But, but this is different. You're not break, he's not, he, he's, he's breaking that, that, that fleshly spirit spirit of a man that whole thing where it's broken down you're you you're, you've you've humbled yourself before god you're not lifted up in pride before him and in some instances you think in the military they're having to deal with guys that are full of pride and they break it down in a different way but that's not how god wants to break it down he's not looking to be this master drill sergeant beating on you and 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 spraying cold water hose all over you and as you're doing push-ups in the mud and, and tired and running with, with logs on your shoulders. You know what I'm saying? That's different. But it's something where it's a heart that is fully surrendered to God and you finally just say, God, I know that I can't do this myself. Maybe circumstances or some buffeting against you has caused you to come to that place of where you finally humbled yourself and say, you know what? I give up. I do need you, Father. I need you. I, can, I, I must give up the pride of life. And brings you to this place of where you have this broken and contrite heart before him. Now, you don't have to go through that. You don't have to be battered. You don't have to be beaten. You don't have to. You can just simply uh, yield your heart and humble your heart before God and have a a willing and obedient heart. You don't have to go through the school of hard knocks. It's not necessary. Because he's written in his word, his instructions, and what he desires to see from his people, his children, that would surrender their hearts to him and give themselves over to him. But if we always have an attitude of, I do it myself, then it's always going to be a little harder. He's not looking. You, listen, you, you, you don't want to come to church with a worship, to worship God, these sacrifices, and sing songs, but yet you still have in your heart this, this I do it myself. Come on. It's not sacrifices that he's pleased come with. On. What he's pleased with yeah. and what he looks at is is that broken spirit and a a broken and contrite heart. For thus says the one, in Isaiah 57 and verse 15, for thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. And also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, what to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. When you come, he revives you. When you come with humility, he revives you. I believe today many of you have been revived by his spirit and he's cascaded upon you. To the level of that you come broken before him will be to the level that he pours. He'll just continue to pour on you. And when I'm talking this brokenness, it's not necessarily broken by life and and sick as a dog. No, it's, it's a humility. There's a humility. Now life can cause you to humble yourself. Circumstances and situations can cause you, but it's not necessary. And then Isaiah 66 and verse 2, all these things in my hand has made. These, all these things my hand has made, and so 
All these things came to be, decla- to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit, and listen to this, and trembles at my word. And trembles at my word. God, look at me. I will surrender everything. I will give myself. Father, be at work within me, giving me the will and the desire to do of what pleases you, that my heart would be broken before you and contrite before you. And let me tremble at your word. Let that be a prayer and a cry that comes from your heart, that you would tremble at his word. That it's life to you. That it's health to you. That it's more real to you than anything in this earth. And you draw with a deep hunger and desire to really know him. Why do I preach this way? Why is this message brought in this this way? Because of what God wants to do in and through you. Like I said earlier, the the vision of this house is that we would know God experientially and second minister from that place. So if you ever say, Pastor, what's the vision of the house? Know God. And minister from that place. Of knowing him. We'll just keep it simple. Can I can I could lay out all these details? No, know God and minister from this place. Because it will be by your his spirit and by his power. Just turn with me over to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 1. There was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Elkanah and the the son of Jerome son of Elihu, son of Tohu, and son of Zuf. What? And an Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina, or Penina. Penina. And the one, and the one... <laughs> And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. Though the Lord had closed her womb, and I'm not going to get into all the depths of that right there, but we're just going to continue to move forward. And her rival used to provoke her grievously, to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah arose. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting 
on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord, and she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunk woman, drunken woman. And Eli said to her, how long will you go on being drunk? Put wine away from you. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Now, of course, this circumstance and situation brought her to a place of a broken and contrite heart before the Lord, but she knew whom to go to, who to run to. The thing that I see as a pastor many times is where people become hurt and the first thing they do is pull away from the church, pull away from God, pull away from being around the body, rest of the body of believers. Now I understand you don't necessarily have to, need to come around everybody, you need to get alone before the Lord, but, but the, that, you got to get on your face. Maybe nobody else what's going on. Maybe you just call the pastor and say, listen, can, can you open the door? And I want to just lay on the altar and cry out to God. Yes, I'd be happy to. Just let yourself out on the side here. Listen, if you need that, you give us a call. We'll find a way. Now, if I'm God, call my wife. She'll come down. We'll figure a way to unlock it. Somebody will open it. Call someone that has a key. And if you need to get on the altar and cry out before the Lord and just get alone and seek His face. Listen, I can guarantee you I've spent many times alone in this house walking around and around and around in prayer crying out to God. Seeking the face of God. Just letting my heart be broken and contrite before Him allowing Him to do whatever He wants to do. Well, your pastor, you get to. Yes, I get to and I'm glad I am doing it. But you get to, too. It's available for you. And he will come and he will cascade upon you like a waterfall. Because deep calls out to deep. Call out from the depths of your heart to God. And he will answer you from the deep place. And he'll give you the answers. He'll speak to you and he'll strengthen your soul. Pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For all, for, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grants your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went away. And ate, and her face was no longer sad. And then they went back to the house of Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. In other words, they were intimate. And the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel. For she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. <laughs> Whoo, glory be to God. Do you notice she received the word from the man of God? When you receive a word of the Lord from the man of God or from, from the Lord, you hear directly from the Lord yourself when you've been crying out to him. Whether it be in your living room floor or whether it be in this, this, this church or whether it be wherever in the woods, whatever you got to go, whatever you need to be to just pour your heart out, heart out before God, then you do it. And I'm not just talking from a place of brokenness like what Hannah was, but also a place of like this desperateness and desire to know God. That's it. Yes. That's it. 
Let your heart be stirred to know Him. If you're in the house and there's not this deep desire to really know Him, you kind of want to know Him. You're thankful that you're saved. You ask Jesus in your heart, but you're just kind of going through the motions of this Christianity and, 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 and living. But I'm telling you, God's not called us to that kind of life. You're going to be frustrated. He gives grace to the humble, but he frustrates the proud. That's what he's looking for. He wants you to come and be broken and contrite before him and put any pride down and allow him to do what he needs to do on the inside. That's the one he will look upon. Well, what did Father do? He looked upon Hannah. He heard her cry. He saw her broken and contrite heart. And she trembled. She received the word. She took it. And she went home. And she conceived a child. This is how you receive your miracle. You know the source of your strength. This is how you're strengthened. This is how you're going to live in a place of victory as an overcomer in Christ Jesus. You see the model of it in Jesus himself coming before Father. He got alone often. He went into the mountains. As I shared a while back where he went and he took Peter and John. I can't remember the other one right now. James, yeah. Duh. And they went up. On the mountain, they got sleepy again, and they woke up, and all of us saw him shining as bright as the noonday sun, probably brighter, and saw also Moses and Elijah with him, talking. There's something about getting alone with Father, and some awesome stuff will happen. Things that he will show you. He can only use, and he can only reveal the deeper things to those that, that will get alone and because and, and, then he can trust you with the true riches, the greater riches of his glory and of his presence. I know you, I understand right now some of you think, well, hold on it. First, give of the natural riches, finances, whatever, and then he can trust you the true riches. Yes, that's true. But I'm just speaking on a deeper level here. In relationship. Knowing him. He already knows you inside and out. But he wants you to learn to know him. And he desires to reveal his heart to you. It's his heart. It's his, his desire. And I'll tell you, it's so much easier to minister out of knowing God than just out of a head knowledge. Being with Father. So important. So she took the word and she grabbed a hold of the word of the Lord that had been spoken to her through, through the, 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 the priest, Sam, um, not Samuel, but um, Eli. And, he trust, and, she, and she trusted him. Yeah. And what are you believing God for? To see take place in your life. What desire, what, hung, what are you hungering to see happen? Come before the Lord with a broken and contrite heart. To receive that which you are asking for. 
But when you ask, ask in faith. Obviously, she didn't go there not expecting to receive anything. She was crying out. So much so that she seemed as a drunk, drunken woman. <laughs> but the moment that she received the word, her countenance was lifted and she, and she went in faith and it's hers. She knows it. And there's been times in my life that, that I'm going, God, why? What's the deal? What's going on? I, I, I give myself completely to you. Help me to understand this. And then I hear the word, I hear what he's saying, I give, he gives me direction, and all of a sudden there's, there's joy, there's excitement, because I know what the Lord has spoken, and I'm going to move on, I'm going to carry on, and we're going to see a mighty breaking. Listen, we had to walk through moments and times. Listen, she was, she was being mocked for not having a child. She was given a hard time. She could have just got, no, chose to get hardened and mad at God. So I'm not even going with you to. to she could have blamed God. But no, instead she cried out to him. She went to the one whom she knew she could receive her answer. Man, I remember when. We were in the process of taking on this building and, and all this stuff, and then, then, then things happened, and it was just a handful of us still, still pushing through and, and just crying out to God. I mean, you could hear, you could literally hear just this mocking in the spirit. It was just, it was, it was a weird thing. You could feel the resistance as we just kept pressing to go forward and, and seeing this facility built out, which now we're going to need another one. And it's like the pressures and the things that you felt and, 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 and thinking you had all the resources and everything, but before you know it, it it's, it's gone. And you're going to make a decision. What am I going to do? Am I going to quit? Am I going to throw in the towel? Or I'm just going to be bring, come before the Lord with a broken, contrite heart and say, God, I'm not understanding everything of what's going on, but I'm giving myself to you, and I refuse to become bitter. I refuse to allow myself, even though what I'm hearing, the mockings and all the different things going on, I I'm pressing in, and I'm going to go forth, and I'm going to stand, and we're going to see this come to pass. Why? Because souls are hanging in the balance. If we would have thrown it in the towel, then we wouldn't have been able to hear the testimony from, from Brother Devin over here and Tamira. If we would have thrown in the towel, we wouldn't have heard uh, uh, old uh, Ramon and, and others that are in this house would have never come. Draper Shana would have never been here. Christian and Pablo would have never been here during that time if we would have just quit. And how God has radically touched and changed their lives. Yeah. And that's just to name a few. But we just keep moving forward. I like what Pastor Rodney says. The dogs bark, but the caravan keeps moving. You're going to have little darking, barking little yaps. You're going to have these dogs bark. But you just keep moving forward. You keep carrying on with the plan, with the purpose, and you keep your heart right before God. You keep it broken and contrite before Him. And you'll see, you'll see the hand of God. You'll see the promises of God come to pass in your life. To where we dwindled down to like eight people, not counting our family. As we press through, that is, that's like... You start asking yourself questions. You start, God, am, am, I in, am I right? Are we missing this? Should we go somewhere else? These questions keep coming. I would go before God and I just keep bringing it before him. And I just, all I would hear is just keep going. Keep moving forward. Right, right, right. Keep pressing in. Okay, Papa. All right, I'll do it. It doesn't make sense to my head, but this makes, uh, but I'm going to do this anyway.
And as you hear other brothers and sisters in Christ, which you're excited for them, and they're just, they start and boom, everything explodes, and you're like, woo, awesome for them. <laughs> you're excited. But you keep moving forward. It's obedience that God's looking for from you, us. That's what he's looking for. Regardless of the circumstances. Because what God's done in this house and what he is doing is the root system is going deep and so that we're strong. So when, every, when other trials or testings of our faith come, we have the strength to stand. But the roots have gone deep. The, the foundation is dug deep so that we can have a strong tower, a strong building, a strong uh, 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 a tree that brings health and healing to those that are in need or that are desperate. Yeah. Keep your heart broken and contrite before him. And that's the one he will look upon. He says, I'll look upon him. And those who would tremble at his word. But I just, I saw this, and, and, and even in prayer, I just, this, this, the word faith came up so strong in my heart. It was like, mm. Because this will take you to a strong place of faith. Because you can see in the life of Hannah where her faith arose, and she... She received that what she cried out for and what was promised to her. In Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 2. We look away. Let's just do verse 1. Let's just do it all. Hold on, that's not what it, hold on, no, we'll just do two. We look away from the natural realm. Let me say this again. We look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who led us forward into faith's perfection. This is the ESV if you want to know that version. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who opposed their own souls so that you won't become worn down and cave in under life's pressures. Who? You don't have to cave in and give over to life's pressures. You will have the strength of faith. And it comes, and this faith works by love, and this love comes from knowing God. This love comes from the intimacy with God. This love comes to this place of having a broken and contrite heart before Him. And then you move and walk as the man of God, the woman of God, that you've been called to walk and live and move in, in the earth. Hallelujah. And then just turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. I think that was actually the TPT I just read that in actually. No. (laughs) 
throughout our history, well, that's one. How did I do that? Now, faith brings our hopes into realities. See, her faith brought the reality of Samuel into her life. Faith will bring reality of what you're believing for, whatever God has given you, the promise that he's given you, or, or, or what you've cried out for. Because he says, ask the Lord what you desire, and he'll give it to you. Now, obviously, the desire is going to be line up with his desires. But he'll give it to you. A lot of times, the size of faith isn't always the problem. It's doubt that's the problem. Because he already said that even if you have a grain of as a mustard seed, size faith, faith is a grain as a mustard seed. Super small. I mean, we saw it on the video where they where where uh, Reinhard Bonnke he showed the seed. I mean, it was like that. You can, it was so small, and he just showed that in his hand, and they zoomed in on it. Small, small, super small. So that, what does that say? It means it says to me that even a newly born again child of 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 God who just got born again can move great mountains, but. You must not doubt in your heart. It's the doubt that gets in the way. It's fears. Or pride. So now faith brings our hopes into realities and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. Now, God is at work within you, giving you the will and the desire to do of his good pleasure. So God is the one giving you the longings. Say, God is is. the one one. giving me the longings. longings. So make sure you know the word. So you're longing for the right things. You'll recognize it. So I'm talking to those who are submitted over to the Lord. You've submitted your heart to him. He's giving you these longings, so he's giving you these longings. So he's expecting you to use your faith to see it come to pass. That is your part. But you stay humble. You walk in humility. You keep that heart that is broken and contrite before him. You do not allow your soul to be lifted up in pride. This is how you will have great faith. This is how great faith will work in your life. It is all the evidence required to prove What is still unseen. See, faith is future. You're having faith, or or should I say, it's what you see in the realm of the spirit, but faith is something that reaches out into the future and brings it into reality because it's something that has not been seen yet. I'm not sure, I'm trying to remember who said this, but um, the empires of tomorrow are the empires of the mind. What they see, what, what they reach out to. You see, God wants to give you his plan and purpose for his kingdom because you're part of his kingdom to see his kingdom established. 
his covenant established in the earth. And you're part of that. And he's requiring you to use your faith to see it come to pass in your lifetime, what he has in store for you for future generations. You see, a foundation has already been laid through Jesus Christ. A foundation has been laid through the, the, the apostles and the prophets. They saw into the future and they laid out a groundwork for us to build upon, but it's still by the Lord and by the Spirit of the Lord. This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. Faith empowers us to see the universe, that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Faith moved Abel to choose a more acceptable sacrifice to offer God than his brother Cain. And God declared him righteous because of his offering of faith. By his faith, Abel still speaks instruction to us today, even though he is long dead. See, the foundation has been laid. Faith translated Enoch from this life, and he was taken up into heaven, and he never had to experience death. He just disappeared from this world because God promoted him. Whoo! <laughs> for God, for before he was translated to the heavenly realm, his life had become a pleasure to God. Let our lives become a pleasure to God. And without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that He is real and that He is and that he rewards the faith of those who passionately seek him. My soul thirsts for you like the deer that pants after the water. Or so my soul shall thirst for you. As a deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you, thirsts for him. Deep calls out to deep. He's looking for those who are passionate. Let us become more undignified in this house and in this place. I guess, oh well, if somebody comes in and freaks out and leaves, oh well. Maybe the Holy Ghost, no, not, the Holy Ghost is going to have to just start grabbing them right there and touching them. They have to fall out under the power and then just, that's just it. Because religion has blo blocked the way to people to coming to the cross. They have this idea, a form of religion, a way it should be. And so when it doesn't fit their mold and they come into a place when everybody's shouting and, and speaking in tongues and going crazy before the Lord, they freak out and, and some run. Religion did that. It's a result of what religion has done. And yet there was an opportunity for them to experience the life of God in that moment, at that time, if they would just said, okay. Now, there has been some that said, okay. <laughs> and they got rocked. And they got touched. They thought we were crazy, thought we were a little weird. But they experienced the love of Jesus. The Bible says we're peculiar. We're a peculiar people. We're a peculiar race. Heavenly. Ha. 
We've become of the heavenly man. Amen? Amen. Mm. Because he gave us a new heart. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. That's why when people look at us, they say, you're different. There's something different about you. Yeah, because Jesus and me. We are aliens, we are strangers, we are not of this world. Now I pulled out an oldie right there. Is it Petra? I think it's Petra. It was from Petra. I even had my wife stomped on that. <laughs> that was an old one. <laughs> I listened to it on my cassette tape. Cassette. <laughs> Eric Pikenen's like, yeah, <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Petra. <laughs> I just remember the big hair 80s bands, uh, Striper. <laughs> oh, it was Christian Rock. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway. Jesus. I remember my brother had come out of the bathroom and his hair all teased up and trying to look like a rocker. <laughs> Back in the 80s. Oh, God. Thank God we got over that era quickly. <laughs> All right, let's stay on track. <laughs> but we're aliens. I, I don't know where, where I was at. We're not of this world. We're peculiar. We're a peculiar race. But we're part of the royal priesthood. We're, we're, we're part of the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we're called to represent but we represent it in faith. And people will recognize it because the power of faith that is released from our lives. Because it's operating by the love relationship that we have with Father. So without faith, living within us, it, is, it would be impossible to please God for we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who passionately seek him. Because that's what Enoch did. Enoch was passionately seeking God. Enoch laid a foundation for us how to seek him. It's an example of how the church, the latter church, is to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And not taste of death. Could it be this generation? Are we hungry enough? Are we pressing in? Is there something that on the inside where we're seeking him? To know him. Faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming. Even things that had never been seen. Yeah. See, God wants to open up stuff to his people, but he's looking for those who have a broken and contrite heart before the Lord. Why did, Noah, why did God speak to Noah? Because he saw him as a righteous man. His heart was right before God. It was broken, it was contrite. And so God could trust him and speak to him and give him the plans to build an ark to save anyone that would believe, but it only became to his own family and the animals that came two by two. So faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming, even things that had never been seen, but he spoken out in reverent obedience to God. You see that reverent obedience, a broken and contrite heart. To, 
to God and built an ark that would save him and his family by his faith. The world was condemned, but Noah received God's gift of righteousness that comes by believing. Faith motivated Abraham to obey God's call and leave the, the familiar to discover the territory he was destined to inherit from God. So he left with only a promise and without even knowing ahead of time where he was going. Abraham stepped out in faith. He lived by faith as an immigrant in his, his promised land as though it belonged to Someone else, he, sowed, he journeyed through the land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob who were persuaded that they were also co-heirs of the same promise. His eyes of faith were set on the city with unshakable foundations whose architect and builder is God himself. Sarah's faith embraced God's miracle power to conceive even though she was barren and was past the age of childbearing. 99. For the authority of her faith, for the authority of her faith rested on the one who made the promise. She tapped into his faithfulness. In fact, so many children were subsequently uh, fathered by this aged man of faith one who was as good as dead, that he now has offsprings as innumerable as the sand of the seashore and as the stars of the sky. Yeah. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons said, Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm. <laughs> Turn yourself. Sit down. Anyway. Children's church. It's faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can see that there are great adventures that lie before each and every single one of us, yeah. even in this city. God will show you individuals to reach out to, but do it by faith. Have faith. Get before the Lord and pray for them. Whoever God has highlighted in your life, family members, friends, pray that their heart would be touched by the love of God and that you would represent God rightly before men. That you would represent his love, represent his character. Have a broken and contrite heart. Now, it's so awesome to see that this morning there were many that were broken before the Lord and allowing him to touch, touch and change and work and, 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 and speak into your life. Rise up in faith and take a hold of that which God has promised you. Amen. That was what was in my heart. Now put it into action. Apply what you've received this morning. And walk it out and live it out and see the mighty hand of God operate in your life. We used our faith to continue in this church. We used our faith for 
the many, many outreaches that we have done and trusted God and saw time and time again when we needed funds or whatever it was in the final hour, the final minutes, the final seconds and get a knock at the door and, it, and somebody giving us a check for exactly the amount that we needed. I mean, the first adventure that we even did, I mean, the church wasn't even a year old and we went to OMAC, Washington and did a, a uh, I guess you'd say a crusade and, and, and in a little town. About 10,000 the city is itself. Final night, there was about 315 people crammed up in the stands. We saw people be saved, filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It was awesome. It was, it was fun. And then one night, the Spanish night, uh, the, the, the spirit of worship took over, and we were down dancing, and the dust was rising. I felt like I was in a foreign nation <laughs> as we were dancing before the Lord. Yeah. I will not despise the days of small beginnings. We just continue to move forward. So we've broken up the follow ground in this, in this region. Going in the streets. Ministering the truth. Ministering, loving on people. Doing the outreaches and drawing hundreds in at a time. Speaking the truth of the gospel. The seed is constantly being cast out there. The ground is being broken up. The ground is being tilled. But these hearts, it's, I just see hearts right now all of a sudden ready to receive. I'm speaking. I see it by the Spirit. Yeah. And, you, and, and we're prepared you. That's why we pre- developed you know, this discipleship package because we wanted to put a tool in your hand to, to train up others so that they, as they're being born again and being brought in and, and they're immediately locked in and, and we can begin to pour the truth of God's Word and bring them into a relationship with God because really this is what it's designed to do. It's designed to bring them into a relationship not just a bunch, it's not about do's and don'ts, it's about a relationship. And out of that relationship, they live in righteousness, they live in holiness. It's about coming into contact with the love of God. Amen? It blessed my heart to hear Susan, she called me the other day and goes, Pastor Jason, can I have three of those packets? I'm going to start discipling three of the people in my apartment complex. That's right. And that's what we're, we're going to yield to the Holy Ghost. And that's what this is about. It's for, just give us a call and say, I need some packets or we'll send you the link and, because, and just start getting to work. Because the, the harvest is ripe. It's ready. It's, 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 it's ready to be harvested. And we will harvest in faith with humility so that there is a great power that's released. I got stopped when I was walking out of, of Fred Myers. And this lady goes, oh, I've been watching online. I was the one who posted it. I wish you were in our living room. <laughs> for the, for the, the, the discipleships we're doing in life. Oh, yeah. I remember that. So we just keep being faithful with what God has called us to do. We will see this city shaken by the power of God. I had the thought, man, maybe are we supposed to go somewhere else? And then and the Lord spoke to me and says, then who else is going to shake Bremerton? I'm not saying that there aren't other churches or other pastors that have a heart for this region, but I know that he's like, I know that he wants to use this house, this pe- these pe- each of you in this house in a mighty way. I know the strength of of the word that's on the inside here in my heart and in your heart. We have people that can, 
many here that can come up and I can sit down and I could, wouldn't even have to preach a Sunday, One, uh, you know, for like a couple months. Amen. How many are encouraged here this morning to run with this faith and keep your heart right before God, broken and contrite before Him, really living in relation and fellowship with Him? Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Don't allow hardships to be the thing that, that, that pull you away. Don't allow these things. Don't allow those that might mock you or even make fun of you. Where's the promise of God? Where's this? Where's that? No, you just keep moving forward and you'll see it happen. It'll come to pass. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Got something, my friend? No? Okay. (laughs) 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 I can't always. I'm kind of done early. <laughs> it's almost, I'm almost kind of like having to pinch myself. Like, really? It's only like 12, 15? <laughs> yes, Bobby. Sure. Let's do that. Those of you who need prayer and your, 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 your bo- prayer for your body, or you're just believing God for some things that you're locking into, and just come on up. We're just going to see some things.